Hello everyone, I am Kaira Erdem. I conducted this research together with Professor Anne Heiligen and Dr. Peter Willem Vermees in the context of Research X Design Research Group within the KU Leuven. Our research is about a pandemic and the city. More specifically, we searched for spatial changes following the COVID-19 pandemic and their effects from a diverse user perspective. Today, I want to present to you our research starting from the link between the COVID-19 and the city, the research question to the literature study and the research methodology. Then will the findings and the discussion follow and I will wind up with a conclusion. The nature of the pandemic. Coronavirus spreads through tiny droplets released when an infected person coughs, sneezes or screams. Drops that get into eyes, nose, mouth or are inhaled transmit the virus to a healthy person. Because the virus spreads in this way, keeping our distance has become crucial. But at the same time, keeping distance is not always possible because how our built environment is designed. To deal with this, measures were imposed in connection with the use of space. Why? Our motivation to research this topic is based on the first lockdown. It was clear how important space is when serious adjustments and measures were imposed in a short period of time, which also severely limit our use of space. We are all influenced by these adjustments in different ways. Therefore, this research focuses on various users to understand the different effects that these measures can have. We also see different policy levels imposing different measures and citizens are using their creative ideas to deal with these changes. The research question. This research aims to answer one central research question. How do diverse people deal with the spatial adjustment in context of COVID-19 pandemic? We are looking to answer this question based on four sub-questions, which are how do people experience adjustments? Where do they see opportunities and or limitations? How do they act on adjustments, top down or bottom up? And how do bottom up initiatives interact with top down decisions? Considering the central research question and the motivation, we performed a literature study. The first phase of the literature study from September to December 2020 mainly yielded studies that focus on how different authorities and people should deal with the virus, what changes are still expected, and what are the possible consequences of this pandemic. The second phase, March and April 2021, provided more information about some users and how they were affected. The literature study addresses to four themes, architecture and human body. Here we look at the connection between human body and architecture and how this connection has evolved over the years. In addition to human body, past pandemics and diseases also influence the evolution of architecture. COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting changes. We collected studies which focus on the changes due to the COVID-19. We looked at these studies from two different scales, effects on urban life, and in private life. Temporary or permanent? This is a question that is impossible to answer, but I believe we all gave lots of thoughts about it during the last two years. Based on past pandemics, we can say that a pandemic changes the cityscape. For example, after the tuberculosis pandemic, lights, air and opening have become much more important for the modernist architects. After the COVID-19 pandemic, it may be that the space will take on a new meaning for the designers. Effects of these changes on people. During the first phase of the literature study, there was little information to find about this topic. During the second phase, some studies had been published examining vulnerable adolescents and women in detail. How did we gather information to conduct in this study? This is qualitative research that used as a basic source of information interviews that were conducted with various users. In addition, use was also made of the current data, newspaper articles, 
open letters, seminars, conferences, and personal observation. The research methodology. To better understand the effects of the pandemic and their measures, interviews were conducted with seven children between the ages of three to 10, four parents of the interviewed children and the 10 members of Leuven Accessibility Advisory Council. These participants all live in Flanders, Belgium. The interviewed users are chosen depending on what is missing in the published literature of other studies. Additional information about some users was also collected through newspaper articles, open letters and seminars. After this, two interviews were conducted with someone working at the city of Leuven and someone working at Flemish government department of environment. During these interviews, we discussed such topics as changes in the use of space and the urban environment, the importance of accessibility in the city, participants' perspective on insights gained, problems related to inclusivity, and participants' vision of future. Analysis of the conducted data. The interviews are analyzed according to the Coagol method. There were some minor adjustments to the method according to the nature of our study. The interviews with participants sharing the same dimension of the diversity were analyzed together. Findings. The users covered in the findings are distinguished according to their age category. Children from 2 to 12 years, adolescents from 13 to 24 years, adults from 25 to 64 years, and older people from 64 years and older. Attention was also paid how people with an impairment or diverse sociocultural backgrounds are affected by the pandemic. These aspects are shown under the different age categories. Findings. Under the age categories, the findings are further divided into three themes. Changes occurring at an urban level. The points of attention here are the phenomenon of the city and how we now make use of the urban environment. Changes in the use of our private space. Here we look at the effects of the changes in our daily life and direct consequences of measures. Some measures have significant effects on population. This team discusses how these measures have affected the users. Some examples of our findings. This research has yielded many and diverse results. It is not possible to discuss them all here, but we wanted to share some interesting findings with you. For example, about children. Closing the playgrounds seem to bring out the creativity of some children where they see other play possibilities in their environment, such as a fallen tree or an empty parking lot. This creates unofficial play areas. Among adolescents, According to StatBell, 2% of young people between the ages of 16 and 24 do not have an internet installation at home. This can cause a major hindrance for these students to follow the online classes and activities. For adults with an impairment, since cafes, restaurants and bars are closed, there are also fewer toilets in the cities. To deal with this, the city of Leuven has installed public toilets at certain locations and there are also accessible toilets in between. It is very positive that the city has also installed accessible toilets as most catering establishments do not have them. Another finding is that since the pandemic, children, adolescents and adults are using the city more to relax, play sports, while people with an impairment and older people avoid coming to the city as much as possible. Discussion. By the way of discussion, we presented preliminary findings to people working at local and regional authorities and asked for their own opinion. And we compared our findings with insights gained through the literature study. Discussion topics. The three topics from the findings are also used in the discussion. Changes occurring at urban level, changes in the use of our private space, direct consequences of measures. While analyzing the obtained results, 
we notice that not every individual within the same dimension of diversity observes these changes in the same way. If, as an example, finding where children, young people and adults are using the city more to relax and play, people with an impairment or older people are avoiding to come to the city when it's not necessary. This shows that time different users can have similar consequences due to the pandemic or measures. As a result, the themes are further, further divided into three sub-themes. Aspects that are similar across different dimensions of diversity, aspects that are outspoken for a particular dimension of diversity, aspects that differ within a certain dimension of diversity. Discussion Overview Here you see an overview of the main and sub-themes to give an idea of how it is divided and which discussion point occurs under which theme. Just like by the findings, there are several points of discussion that are a little too much to cover them all here. That's why we have chosen some of the interesting discussion points for you. For example, children have a strong interest in animals and nature in their environments. We do not immediately see such an attention among adults, but the fact that nature reserves are visited much more during the pandemic, we do see a movement towards nature. We have also seen that public space can become inaccessible for all kinds of reasons. For example, by clearing the, or closing the parks or squares, by giving extra terrace space to the catering business, or even because of our own prejudices. One respondent also highlighted an important aspect, namely, the urban planners largely have similar profile. And this makes it difficult to design taking diversity into account. For example, the homeless are also users of the space, but most spatial planners are educated people who live in their own homes. This could make it very hard for the urban planners to understand the needs of the homeless. There was also talk about the mobility switch and how it can also lead to inaccessibility for certain users. An employee of the Environment Department believes that there should be a clear dialogue to make the cities accessible to every user. There were also some interesting aspects from the literature review on women that were not addressed in our findings. Reflection. It is not self-evident to research a current topic. There are many changes in the situation and this creates obstacles in the investigation. Since there are few studies to be found, we have not found any sample methodologies to use for this research. We ended up using trial error when, we first, when the first research method turned out not to work for this study. Originally, we planned to organize our research around measures, but since the measures often change, uh, this was not as suitable to collect information consistently. And then we switched to an interview-based study. What could be done better? There are interesting results, but perhaps additional interviews with homeless people, underprivileged families, or for example, with students who do not have internet at home would yield even more interesting results. Conclusion. Measures are temporary phenomena. So it is possible that the authorities do not think too long when they are imposed. People are affected in various ways by these measures. Diversity plays a big role here, but we also saw other examples where different users have similar consequences and similar users can have different consequences. Since the effects of the measures is so profound, it, is, it might be better for the decision-making authorities to consider the possible consequences of measures in more detail before imposing the measure. As it briefly mentioned, researching during the pandemic is not self-evident. The number of infections determines the measures imposed. Some measures have more influence on this study than others. For example, closing the cafes, bars and restaurants means that the parks and other public spaces are used more. Now the catering industry can open again under certain conditions. 
it may be interesting to conduct a similar study after measures are eased to compare the findings. I would like to close by remembering that each individual is separate, different and equally important. It is important to realize this and try to show each other more understanding. This research aims to highlight the differences and possible similarities between people and at the same time also show that not everything is black or white but there are many different colors to be found. Thank you for your attention.